to bring you a bag of something. She said, you're the rottenest person I ever saw. Because <laughs> she said, I got all the white we need. All she got was the gizzards. <laughs> oh, we used to have some fun. Some good times. But those old days are over, all over now. For the well-to-do, there were happy times, exciting times. Uh, there were trolleys all over Tampa, but only one person had a private trolley, and that was Mrs. Chapin. She had a beautiful trolley with a bar and a nice, nice lounge in it, and uh, she entertained her friends, and they rode all up and down Tampa town. They would go on outings to Ballast Point or DeSoto Park, even as far as Sulphur Springs. But there were other people where they were, they were uh, having trolley parties, and you could rent a trolley for the day. And some of the younger set would take a trolley and decorate it, have a band on board, and serve refreshments, and, and ride to the different parks, and uh, be out all day long riding all over the community. And they were real f fun days. And of course, the young ladies of that period were beautiful plume hats, and they had their parasols and long, uh, dresses, you couldn't even see the ankles, and they, they, they were really a, a, a nice social period for Tampa at that, uh, that was developing. They were very much impressed with outer appearances and very much concerned with their clothes, weren't they, Tony? Yes, they were. In spite of the fact that there was no air conditioning, they were dressed from tip to toe. As a matter of fact, one Tampa historian recalls that when she was a child, her mother asked her to step through the front door onto the porch to retrieve the newspaper and the milk that had been left there the night before, and the child absolutely refused, because though she was completely dressed except for her feet, she wouldn't have imagined that she could be in front of the public's eye without her long black stockings tightly um, controlled underneath her garters and with her high black shoes buttoned all the way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, I was reading that some of the families that could afford to do so would send their young ladies out of the state to finishing schools, which they called colleges. Most of them were in Georgia, and they were very much impressed with how the young girls would turn out and were very much concerned about them learning to behave like ladies. And one young Tampa girl was returned home in disgrace because the authorities discovered that she did not have a row of lace on the base of her chemise. <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> you know, Joyce, some of the townspeople would join uh, the tourists on the Tampa Bay Hotel uh, launches on their trip to Sulphur Springs. Along the way, the uh, hunting guide of the, of the hotel, his name was Arthur Schliemann, had uh, placed a few dead alligators along the, the weeds next to the banks of the river, and the tourists would all get very excited. At times, he would even come running with a gun and say, here, shoot him. <sighs> and uh, so they, they really were getting their money's worth, and the townspeople would, were, of course, enjoying it all. Uh, there were other modes of entertainment during that period, and there was, uh, well, they had hay rides all the way to Rocky Point. Rocky Point was a real beauty spot, and it still is today. And they had a hotel there that was quite plush, and those who could afford it would, would spend the weekends there. And uh, I have old photographs that shows the people that are entertaining themselves in this lovely area. But uh, it was about that time that, that the Tampa Yacht Club was organized. And of course, after it was organized, it, it sat right on the shore of the bay, more on the water side than on the land side. And from what I, uh, I gather, they had a lot of gay and lovely parties there. Those people who could, sent their children to be educated at the Convent of the Holy Names, which was located downtown in Tampa, and it occupied a complete city block. There was a big wooden fence dividing the school property from the commercial area, and another fence up the center to divide the boys' school from the girls' school. And one frisky young lady climbed to the top of the fence, looked over and said, I love sugar, I love tea, I love the boys, and the boys love me. The nuns found out about it and sent her home in disgrace for unladylike conduct. <laughs> of course, Joyce, during those years, right after the turn of the century, one of the most important events in the history of Tampa began and centered around the legend of Jose Gaspar the Pirate. 
You piece of pie, legend, did you say? Saint Barnacle, but I'll have you drawn and quartered and your carcass strung atop the highest mainsail for them words. What's that? The ghost of the great Jose Gaspar. That's who, dummy. Am I not the nasty, mean Gaspar? The terror of the Spanish men? Why I'm so bad? Listen to this, Peter. I have loved only one woman, my fair duchess. But when she refused to be mine, I cut off her head, chopped, and buried it with my booty. Wasn't that a mean thing to do, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Oh, yes, yes. Even the king of Spain himself put a ransom on my handsome head. But I stole a ship from under his very nose and made the Gulf of Mexico my hunting ground. Gold and jewels filled my coffers until my kingdom on Gastorilla Island rivaled his own. That's how the story goes. You think it's a made-up story? You still don't believe? I've asked, Pizza. You'll soon learn what's real. My men have you surrounded. Your keels capsized in the wash. I, my hombre, you and your pretty senorita are my captives. Hi, it's walked a plank for you. And off to my lair on Captiva Island with her. She'll make a fair addition to my collection of damsels. <gasps> Never fear, Joyce. I'll protect you from this terrible varmint. You're not going to hurt me, are you? Don't hurt me, Pizza. Oh, don't hurt me. <laughs> oh, there, there, Jose. Don't cry. You'll get your eye patch wet. And by the way, Jose, how did you lose that eye? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just part of the pirate costume. I understand. I wear one myself every Gasparilla. But you're right, Jose. You have given us tampons a lot of fun throughout the years. Yeah? How? Why, Jose, all the parades and balls and parties our Gasparilla has grown into a big carnival, but it began in a very small way. One day back in 1904, Mary Louise Dodge, who was the society editor of the Tampa Tribune, was working on plans for a Little May Festival. Just then, a native of New Orleans named George W. Hardy happened, happened by and he suggested that she think about doing something like Mardi Gras but with a theme based on your story, Jose. Well, Miss Dodge loved the idea. So Hardy set out to form a secret group, which would be the first mystic crew of Gasparilla. He got 50 men who were supposed to arrive on horseback, dressed as pirates. But only 26 were brave enough to get on horses, and one of those was thrown into a rose bush. Well, okay, Pisa. I'll let you go this time, but you remember, you take Jose serious from now on, or I come back again to hunt you. The great, horrible, terrible Jose, that's me. Uh, you don't get rid of me so easy, Pizzo. Ah, those stories you make up about me. First, that I was captured and hanged at the end of Franklin Street. Ha! <laughs> what a bunch of baloney. And then you say a U.S. Navy ship captured me and hanged me from the yard arm. Or, or that I jumped overboard crying, no one takes Jose Gaspar. I like that one best. I hear my men calling. I must go. So goodbye for now, piece of pie. Adios, Jose. We will never forget you. <laughs>